Hello my friends on YouTube. Today's video, today is uh, March 7, 2021. Today's video actually inspired by uh, a comment about the Abrahamic Accord. And this is very interesting uh, subject. I didn't talk about it, but I would like to give my personal point of view about this subject. And I hope it could help some people. Um, well, you can call that the United States of Abrahamic states, or you can call it the, instead of the European Union, you can call it the Abrahamic Union. It all, uh, they're all synonymous, but uh, nowadays, we have that uh, treaty that um, to bring peace in the Middle East, we should be, uh, we should follow this treaty. I'm not against peace. I hope peace can come, even partial peace, better than no peace. However, I have different opinion. And I unfortunately cannot share this optimism uh, with anyone. Not that uh, I would like it to fail, no. Uh, let me elaborate on the situation. Uh, some people try to approach the problem between Palestine and Israel or between the Arabs and the Jewish state, between Muslim and Jews, between Arabs and uh, Israeli, either from a political point of view, religious point of view, uh, economic point of view, and that all may work a little bit. This, but however, it, it will be for, in my opinion, this is like you have an infected wound and you cover it with uh, a piece of cloth or you put a bandit on bandit on it and pretend it's fine it is not unless you get rid of the infection and you clean that wound completely and totally we are deceiving ourselves let me get to the point where this problem started this problem actually started about 4,000 biblical years ago. And that may touch the Muslims, so that uh, not, not that I want them to be angry or upset, but just take a moment, take a step back and think about this. 4,000 years ago, a man by name Abraham and his wife Sarah received a gift from the pharaoh of Egypt called a woman called Hagar and then they went to their land the land of Canaan and they settled there there the wife was eager the, the wife Sarah was eager to have a child that's fine but she felt she's old and she cannot have a child and what was customary at this region and at this time is the man can actually take another woman or a servant and conceive with her, get her pregnant, and the child born will actually belong to the family, not to the servant. And basically this what Abraham and Sarah agreed to do. So she suggested to take Hagar to conceive a child for them. And he agreed. And that was a problem. The Jewish people also may actually be upset with me. That's okay. I'm saying what's in my head. Uh, here, who was Hagar? Hagar was a woman given by the Pharaoh to 
Abraham as a servant. Now, the Pharaoh of Egypt is not giving, going to give him his daughter or the daughter of the prime minister or the daughter of the foreign minister to be his servant. No way. He is going to send or one of his assistants he, he doesn't have to say it. One of the workers will go to the slave market and buy a girl to be given as a gift to Abraham. Okay, there was sla there were slave mar slave markets in Egypt and in many countries at this time. That was normal practice. Now. I want you to take a step back and think whether you are Jewish or Muslim. What kind of a woman would Hagar be? Her father is selling her in the market as a slave girl. He knows that she will be mistreated, abused probably, uh, become a sex slave could be and yet he's selling her. That means he is not really of the high caste of the well-educated people. A man who is willing to sell his child. Okay. So Hagar is coming from that kind of environment. Her father is dirt poor. She doesn't know anything. There is no... She is not cultured, she is not educated, she is not cultivated. She is probably below the standard of a peasant. Okay, you take this woman, you put her as a servant, she is fine as a servant. That's what she can do. But then when uh, the master of the house takes her and sleeps with her then this is a problem especially when she got pregnant and as an Egyptian and she was an Egyptian I can imagine the words that she said to the wife you old woman you cannot conceive huh? and probably she hurt her feeling a lot and for Sarah, probably she endured all this abuse because she needed a child. All right? Soon, Sarah conceives. What happened? She cannot take that anymore from this ungrateful servant. Send her back, she said to her husband. Get rid of her. I didn't read that, uh, but one person, a Christian person, told me when he kicked her out, he gave her supplies of food and water for one single day. And nobody knows exactly whether she should have gone back to Egypt, or if she was allowed to go back to Egypt and got lost in the Arabian desert and she settled there or she was afraid to go back to Egypt that the, the Pharaoh may kill her because she was given and she's returning she's defying his word she could be killed so she settled in uh, the Arabian desert however in any case in any case to send a woman with a, a little child on a journey I mean, if you are a strong man, young strong man, to make this journey probably will take you at least 10 days walking. And to send them out with one day supply of food and water, that was a practical death sentence. So I want you now to imagine in the shoes of Ishmael and what his mother Hagar charged him with all the time she was in Arabia 
finding food to eat. Who knows what she did? She could have sold her body as a prostitute to provide him with food. She was a servant. She had no skills other than selling her body. And imagine the feeling she had and how much anger she had and she injected her son Ishmael with this anger towards his father and towards the Jews, his brothers or half-brothers. This is the very root of the problem really. It is a family problem, family feud. And I don't see, you know, if you bring, if let's say go back uh, 4,000 years ago and one of the children of Abraham, uh, let's say Isaac, takes $20,000 or a big sum of money and bring it to his brother in, in uh, Arabia, in the Arabian desert, or some gold or whatever. I don't think that will melt the resentment that he had. So that resentment is actually inherited since this time, in my opinion. This is inherited resentment and hate. It is not about the land itself. It is not about the money. It's not about the advancement of the Jews. It's not about any of that. It is an inherited hate since the time of Abraham. So did Abraham, Abraham make a mistake? In my opinion, that was a terrible mistake. I know that the Muslim don't believe, the, first they believe that Abraham was a prophet, which the Jews don't believe that. They believe he was the fa their, their grandfather, but not a prophet. Um, the Christian, the same thing. They don't believe he was a prophet. He was the father of uh, all prophets, the grandfather or whatever you want to put it. Uh, and the Muslim don't believe that prophets make mistakes, which is a huge mistake in my opinion. Everybody makes mistakes as a human. Alright? So, he made a mistake. And in my opinion, if you want to really fix this problem, it's not through the, the Abrahamic Accord Treaty. It's not about... Uh, because with that uh, treaty there would be economic progress and uh, give and take between the nations, between Turkey, Israel, uh, all the Arab countries, and there would be development. But if you have a hurt, money does not heal that in the inner hurt, that hurt in your heart. That economic development is nothing. So there has to be a healing in the heart of the family of Abraham between the Arabs and the Jews first or between the sons of Isaac and the sons of Ishmael other than that I'm sorry all that is like putting a band-aid on the wound now the thing that as I was uh, preparing for this the person who started that whole idea, if you go back to 1992, uh, there was a blind man, from an Egyptian blind man in New York. I think he was in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, his name is Omar Abdurrahman. That man, he is the one who... Uh, worked on the destruction of the World Trade Center in the first time in 1992 okay with him there was one young man working his name was Sayyid Nusir these were true Muslims and uh, I don't like to use the Muslim extremists they tell you Muslim extremists that's nonsense there is no Muslim extremist these are true Muslims they are following in the footsteps of the Prophet so I call them true Muslims or practicing Muslims because they are following 
in the footsteps of Muhammad. They are doing what Muhammad had done to others. So they are using his formula. They are not extremists, not at all. If you call them extremists, then Muhammad was more extremist. He was the most extremist. Okay? They are, call them as they are. They are the true Muslims. Okay? So, this guy, his name was Sayyid Nusayr. Uh, he, he killed, he was with that group, but he killed the Jewish rabbi, his name was Mayer uh, Kahana, 1990. Some people say he's, it's not him, it's him. That's not for me to decide. This is the police and the FBI decide that. Anyway, he is still in prison until today. While he is in prison, and when you are in prison, I guess you have a lot of time to think, study, and do research and all kinds of stuff. And probably this is what he had done. And what amazes me that he is extremely smart person. Because he is the one who came with that solution. To melt the Abrahamic religion between the Arab, between the Palestinian and the Jews. To melt the religion. To melt the understanding. Like. America is the melting pot, kind of like um, try to mix them together. However, he is using his method within the circle that Muhammad drew for him. So despite of his intelligence, I really believe he is a very smart man to come with this solution on his own and he made a, a research. I must admit, he is a very smart man. But within the circle of Islamism and Muhammadism. So, uh, he actually sent his research or his whatever uh, essay to uh, George, Bush, George Bush Sr. He sent it to him. He didn't respond. And we really don't know if he read it or what he done with it. We don't know. And then, after George Bush Sr. came Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton is the one who paid attention to it. And she took it to the University of Virginia, the University of uh, Harvard University, uh, Pennsylvania University, Florida uni uh, some uh, a university in Florida, and so on and so forth. And these people worked on, they found out that this is very, very fascinating, but they took it to a new level. It's a step for globalization. And that's why afterwards, when George Bush Jr. came, remember his speech, New World Order. Dick Cheney actually is the one who recognized this guy and sent him a message back in prison, told him, we read your notes. Imagine a vice president responding to a criminal in prison, telling him, we got your notes. He's recognizing him for his accomplishment. We, we read your notes. That's Dick Cheney. And then George Bush uh, Jr. speaks about the new world order. One world government, one world religion. Okay, I'm not against good order in the world. And if there is a good religion, if you want to want to make uh, you want to you want to make one religion, it is not to con to, to co like uh, to deceive people, like what they do in China. Practically, they are diluting all religion to make them believe that Xi Jinping is the savior. Look, if some people want to believe that he is the savior, fine with me. You want to believe Moses is the savior, is fine with me. You want to believe Muhammad is the savior, fine with me. If you want to believe Jesus is the savior, is fine with me. But not to be pushed on you on, or me to bring your own uh, idol, in a way, 
and put him on top and tell me this is the new savior okay if i need a savior i choose my savior if i need a religion i choose my religion if i don't want a religion leave me alone so this is the new chinese in a way uh, that's why hillary clinton and all these globalists they really love the chinese system and the islamic system because they have one head one person on top delegate responsibility to everybody else and everybody else must say yes sir that's my take on this and i'm going to put the the, the name of this guy and the study it was uh, that i read it was in arabic you can copy it and and translate it through google i don't know how, how good it will be but anyway the research was in arabic and i'm going to put it to put the link in the description thank you very much we hope to hear from you